Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, dear chairperson, for that for that nice introduction. Uh, at the outset, let me thank uh, dear Dr. Banchi Sabu sir and the entire Diacare Con team for this opportunity, and I would like to congratulate for the excellent uh, coordination and the conference as well. So, uh, I am talking on a different topic which you are listening right now. Um, so it's about vaccination in uh, diabetes. Why? Why we are discussing about immunization or vaccines, different vaccines used in diabetes patients. So definitely diabetes uh, where you see impaired defense mechanism among your diabetes subjects, mainly starting with poor antibody response, cell mediated abnormality starting with decreased CD4, CD8 lymphocyte ratios, changes in natural killer cell function, defects in interleukin 2 function, uh, impaired leukocyte function and of course when we when you discuss about infection mainly uh, what we see in diabetes patients starting with respiratory infection which again this poor defense mechanism predisposed to colonization and of course resulting in different infections in your patients. So again while discussing the main reasons for uh, increased infection rate in diabetes patients longer duration of diabetes and along with poor glycemic control is again to be noted in type 1 diabetes there is 4.4 fold increase risk of infection and in type 2 it is 1.2 fold diabetes patients almost three times at higher risk for infection mainly respiratory hpa1c more than or equal to nine percentage definitely the risk is more and a1c less than seven percentage have 22 percentage increased risk compared to non-diabetes subjects so while we discuss the importance of immunization how it works in your patient till now like uh, these two years during the pandemic situation uh, before that many a times when we discuss about vaccination to our patients they were uh, like uh, surprised to hear about adult immunization but after covid uh, then we started using covid vaccines then patients are convinced like they can survive long after having a proper immunization in your diabetes patient so many of the uh, experiments have shown that human cells uh, in the lab uh, that is outside the body uh, the innate cellular immunity may be compromised in uncontrolled glycemic status so in a hyperglycemic or acidic environment neutrophils and macrophages malfunction and the restoration of normal glycemia and in a normal ph it reverses as well the adaptive cellular immune system may also be compromised but the evidence is passed T cell function may be compromised, especially in hyperglycemic conditions. There is no evidence that the humoral adaptive immune system functions differently in patients with diabetes, but definitely the usage of vaccines will help your diabetes patients to avoid or uh, any of the infection which we discuss later during this session. So to start with pneumococcal uh, infection. So the last two decades we have seen so many of respiratory disease outbreaks during all these outbreaks and recently what we had the COVID crisis pandemic there also many of our patients had to get hospitalized and many a times what we have seen is a uh, lot of patients ending with pneumonia that too uh, the studies have shown in the earlier that the deceased uh, there is decreased one year survival in patients with type 2 diabetes who are getting hospitalized with history of pneumonia and uh, those diabetes patients getting admitted for pneumonia had higher mortality within the first 30 days and one third died at one year. So uh, pneumococcal vaccine, when you discuss about the pneumonia vaccines, the main vaccine which we discuss is the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, which includes 23 purified capsular polysaccharide antigen, uh, it has, which represents the majority of the serotypes of uh, pneumonia. And uh, diabetes patients have a normal humoral response to pneumococcal vaccination. That's what the studies say. And pneumococcal immunization is significantly reduces morbidity and mortality related to pneumococcal disease. So definitely vaccination is a cost effective uh, preventive strategy. So this has been already discussed. And uh, it has also shown that uh, when you compare with uh, healthy individuals, those who are having comorbid conditions, including diabetes or chronic heart disease, alcohol abuse and chronic lung disease there is difference uh, that is three to six fold increase risk of invasive pneumococcal disease and the reason or the updated guidelines suggest that there is some difference from the older one uh, in the healthy adults that is above the age of 60 
65 there is uh, the recommendation is for going for ppsb 23 single dosage and uh, what is different in diabetes is definitely considering the immunocompromised condition in diabetes as well as other situation 90 to 64 years of age you can go for ppsb 23 one dose uh, it is recommended and above the age of 65 also one dose is recommended the difference is uh, earlier we used to discuss about pcv now Uh, the pcv vaccination is no longer routinely recommended for adults aged more than 65 years instead you can have a shared clinical decision making for the usage of pcv wherever it is indicated so that is the difference so many of the organization definitely recommends or advises the usage of different vaccines including pneumococcal vaccines uh, if you are not uh, aware of the situation of vaccination status of your patient uh, if it is unknown you can go for Uh, single dosage of pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine in the, the high risk and after vaccination what is happening is the protective capsular type specific antibody levels generally develop by the third week following vaccination and uh, what what the protection duration which we have seen is following the vaccination serotype specific antibody levels decline after 5 to 10 years and in certain uh, groups that is in children and elderly a more rapid decline in antibody levels may occur in Uh, that's what we have seen the results of one epidemiological study suggests that vaccination may provide protection for at least 9 years after the initial dosage in our uh, center also we have been come across any serious adverse even after uh, pneumococcal vaccine definitely uh, we have seen one or two injection site reactions and fever after the vaccine hypersensitivity to any component of the vaccine should be taken care of Uh, so a proper history should be taken before providing the vaccine so these are the two different vaccines which we di discuss in pneumococcal infection that is the ppsv 23 uh, which is commonly used and the one recommended right now and the pcv 13 which has 13 serotype being addressed so with that we'll move on to influenza uh, diabetes subjects are six times more likely to be hospitalized during an influenza epidemic and the data shows that the mortality is also high it can be due to or uh, the, it has shown that influenza can trigger coronary episodes in diabetes the risk of cvd is 2 to 4 fold higher the subgroup analysis and subsequent studies have shown vaccination vaccination efficacious and cost effective in reducing hospital admission and associated complications and after vaccination uh, what happens in influenza vaccine is uh, after one week of vaccine uh, there is increase in antibody titer and increased percentage of b lymphocytes seen which protects the subject uh, against the influenza uh, infection so we have the commonly used two different vaccines which we discuss uh, in influenza vaccination that is the traditional flu vaccine that is the trivalent and the quadrivalent which has the four uh, different strains and definitely it is uh, seasonal you have to change the vaccine every year these are the trivalent and the quadrivalent different vaccines and uh, data has shown that after influenza vaccination there is 56 percentage reduction in any complication related to influenza infection 54 percentage reduction in hospitalization and reduction in deaths as well so just like uh, pneumococcal vaccination many of the scientific organization advocate the usage of influenza vaccine among your diabetes subjects you can see the different organization recommending influenza vaccination to be administered in uh, diabetes patients and definitely without discussing covid vaccination the topic is incomplete but as you know covid vaccination itself is a different huge topic to be discussed so i'm not going into detail uh, as of now we have this uh, list of covid vaccines available and uh, three or four are being advised to go for third dose after the usual two dosage which we use in uh, covid uh, infection so uh, this was the indian guideline for vaccination in diabetes which was published in 2012 uh, the suggested use of vaccines uh, in diabetes and here you can see uh, in what all situation in diabetes you can opt for the different vaccines and and i would like to share our own experience from our center we started using different vaccines since 2009 and we do we don't don't have any reported adverse events after vaccination more than 75 percentage that two belong to above the age of 65 years had vaccinated and uh, we haven't seen any difference like age gender marital status geographic area educational level occupation type duration therapy of diabetes comorbidities did not have a statistically significant effect on vaccination acceptance 
And uh, the data, this was again published uh, at IDF Melbourne, the safety of pneumococcal and influenza vaccination in diabetes patients from South India. And the recommendation of vaccines in diabetes patients include pneumococcal, which we discussed earlier, and influenza. And we do have the other optional vaccines, but uh, many a times we do discuss about the most common infection which we come across that being the respiratory infection that is pneumococcal and influenza. That too, it is very difficult to convince patients to go for this vaccination. But once they take the influenza vaccine, every year patients themselves will come and ask for the vaccine because they have uh, shared their experience like at their home, many had viral infection, but I didn't get that infection because this vaccination had prevented uh, from that infection. So definitely uh, a country like ours, uh, vaccines are crucial to prevent uh, mortality uh, in that more than 25 percentage of deaths are due to infections which we are seeing. And like what I said earlier, we are more uh, aware of the pediatric immunization, but when uh, we discuss about the adult vaccination or immunizations, many are not accepting the fact that they do require this uh, vaccination to prevent the so-called infection which will result in hospitalization or increase in mortality or morbidity. So how to in increase or improve the awareness of adult immunization so as to cover, cover the uh, crisis or need. The improving our adult uh, vaccination coverage in India could help break the chain of infection, reduce the burden of disease among patients with chronic conditions, prevent wider community spread and specifically better coverage will result in reduced incidence rates of infection, reduced hospital admission, reduced health cost and of course thereby improving the quality of life. So these are the simple eight steps which can be used to set, set up a better or ideal immunization center for your diabetes patients. Assign a vaccine coordinator or champion, plan a workflow and workspace dedicated for vaccination only, identify who can vaccinate in your setup, uh, arrange for training for para paramedic staff and counsellors, ensure cold chain storage of vaccines, maintain proper records of vaccination with help of immunization card which is very 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 important because you have to track whether the patient is uh, taken vaccination already or not, prepare for adverse event management which I have discussed in our centre also we haven't seen any serious adverse events after uh, going for immunization. Uh, consider standing order protocol for vaccinations. Even without that, you can go for a even four simple actions which can improve adult vaccination rates among your patients. Assess the immunization stat status of all your patients during every clinical encounter. Let it be your diabetes educator or nurse who is interacting with your patient. He or she can assess and take a history of, about immunization. Provide a strong recommendation for vaccines that your patients need. Even you can go for uh, your other patients who had already vaccinated being encouraging other patients to go for immunization. Administer needed uh, vaccines or at minimum refer your patients to provide a, those who can provide the immunization because many a times all of the centers won't be having these facilities so you can refer to your, uh, other centers where uh, you have the facility for providing immunization. And documentation, definitely I said it is very important. Document the vaccines your patients receive from you or from other providers. So uh, this is the vaccination card which we use at our center for providing to the patients. So strategies to improve vaccination, identify the eligible candidates, discuss the benefits and safety, incorp incorporating with routine care, documenting the procedure. Definitely all the uh, treatment protocol or guidelines advice on the usage of uh, vaccination among your diabetes patients so as to prevent the risk of uh, getting hospitalized or in uh, reducing mortality or morbidity because vaccinations are of proven efficacy and safety that is why uh, the importance of vaccination even during the covid scenario many a times what we have seen is patients will say that vaccine will have some side effect uh, so they won't uh, accept the thing that they have to go for vaccination but you have to make the patient and uh, the entire family aware of the situation so that you can provide a better quality of life for your patient. So, uh, Onam wishes from God's own country, Kerala. Thank you.